Now from this point on, we're going to start setting up the UVs and the materials for our game geometry. The materials don't have anything to do with how the character is going to look. They're really just to separate out the different pieces that we want. And so when we take this into Substance Painter, it's gonna look at those materials and each one of those is gonna be separated out. And so for instance, if we had something that was all the wood pieces, for instance, we could put on one material and one UV map. And that way we don't have to spread those material properties across a bunch of different uh, materials. We can actually have one that is more focused on the wood parts, one that is more focused on the gold parts, etc. So let's go ahead and start with the eyes. And the eyes are gonna consist of three materials and because nothing else is going to be on those UV maps, each part of the eye can take up the entire UV space. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up our UV editor. And let me just drop it over on the side here. All right, and then I also want to open up the hypershade. So the outer part of the eye already has a material because it's transparent. So we know it already is a separate material. It's this blend seven, we'll call this eye outer. And if you ever want to confirm what pieces of geometry are assigned to what, you can go in and right click on this and say select objects with material. So we've got the outer part of the eye. Let's look at the UVs. So the UVs for the outer part are set up like this. So the, this is the one pole of the sphere and this is the other pole. And so we're not going to be adding a texture to this. And so we could actually leave this as is if we wanted to. If you turn on your checkerboard, you can see the pattern here. Now, one thing I will notice is the fact that the squares are a little bit squashed. And so if we actually take this and scale it down in the Y, we'll actually make those a little bit more regular. And you can see though, how they, when they come into the pole, what that looks like. So you basically got seams all across there. So if we wanted to make this a little bit cleaner, the way I'll do this with spheres is I'll usually go ahead and let's just cut this down the center and actually it's going to be going this direction. So I'll create a cut kind of like that. Let's get our tools back and I want to cut this and then let's go ahead and connect all these central edges up. So we'll go. So same thing down here. Now let's double click on each of these shells and we'll do an unfold and it unfold like that. And then I'm just gonna take this, sew it together. And so, and then we're basically gonna get these two circles. All right, so we can take these and lay them out like that if you want to. You could have left it the other layout as well, it's fine. Your texture is just gonna depend on how your layout is created. So we've got that added. The next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we have a material on the inner eye. And so let's take a look at our eye group. And here's the inner eye. We need to do the same thing with the UVs. And if we go into the attribute editor, we can see what material is actually assigned, this Lambert one. And so because I don't want the default material on there, I want a separate, separate material. I'll go ahead and create a new one. And this Lambert 10, I'll call eye inner. And then I want to assign that to our inner eye. So the material is assigned. Let's cut this one. Okay, I'm gonna turn the outer eye off. For the inner eye, let's go ahead and cut it kind of right here. So I'll cut it and we'll do the same thing we did before. This time we only have one pole, which is the back of it. So sew that together, unfold, sew and unfold. And then this one as well. And this one, I'm actually gonna leave flat like this because of the way the eye texture is created, there's a lot of lines coming down from the edges into this part. And so think about we're painting a texture. If this was the front of the eye, we'd have to paint going all the way around, or we'd have to have some sort of procedural that would go all the way around in a specific area. Whereas if we have this set up, all we have to do is paint straight lines, which if we're using a procedural to get an effect, it's gonna be a lot easier to accomplish. So you can see this is the inside, and then we've got the outside. I do want to go in and just clean this up. So right now you can see these aren't spaced out appropriately. So I'm going to take this top edge and move it down until these are a little bit closer to what we want. And then the back edge, 
you can see how those are a little bit smushed. I'm going to go ahead and pull those in a bit. Kind of like that. We'll take this one, pull those in a bit. And we'll just kind of space it out so that it's a little bit nicer, a little matches a little bit better with what we want. And I'm also going to move the seam to the inside. So right there, let's go ahead and cut it. So like these edges and we'll stitch them over to the other side. Turn off our checker pattern. Let's scale everything down a little bit. And you do want to make sure everything is inside of your zero to one space. So something like that. And again, because we have the only material is going to be on this, then we can have that stick up the whole space and the eyes are going to be identical. So each eye can share the same material and UV space. So let's go ahead and add the pupil. Pupil is also assigned to Lambert one. So let's go ahead and create a new material. I'm just going to create a surface shader and we'll call this eye pupil and let's assign it to the eye. All right. And then let's just grab these faces and I'm just going to do a quick planar map and I'll go into the options and let's choose best plane. And now I will scale it down a little. Okay. So now our eye inner, our pupil and our eye outer all have UV layouts completed and they have materials created for them. So because of that, we can now take our eye and you can see where one of the, the, I think it's the pupil is red. And so what I want to do is we have the, the shaded turned on. If we turn that off, you don't see that red. If you do see the red, all I'm going to do is flip this. Let me go up to modify and we'll just flip it. Make sure I got selected. Go up to modify and go to flip. And so it turned blue. Blue is what we want just because red is going to indicate a reversed normal, which in this case is probably not going to make a big difference because it's going to be in the same area. The geometry is all going to be the same. And so, once we have that, I'm going to take the I group that we have, control G to group it. And then I'm going to control D to duplicate it and flip it in the X by going negative one. We'll freeze the transformations. And now you can see here, those UVs are reversed. And so we'll actually leave those reversed. So the material can be exactly the same on both of them. The texture can be exactly the same. All right. So let me take our I groups out of their duplication group. We'll get rid of those extra groups there. And we can start to call this something like I group right, I group left. Okay. And we can freeze the transformations on that initial one. And now our eyes are ready to go into substance painter. So the next thing that we want to do are take care of the gold pieces in much the same way. So as I complete these, I'm going to go ahead and turn the visibility of them off so that I know what's done and what hasn't been done. So next we'll take a look at the gold pieces and how we can incorporate all of those onto a single UV map. So we'll do that next.